And the crew aboard the station will transfer cargo out of the ATV and will put their trash and other consumables inside of it. Once the ATV's mission is complete, it will depart the station and will be deorbited and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. The ATV will launch aboard an Ariane 5 rocket, and the ATV will be the largest cargo that that rocket has ever carried into orbit. The ATV spans about 32 feet long by 15 feet wide and weighs almost 45,000 pounds at liftoff. The size of the ATV is comparable to a London double-decker bus. We'll take a moment to show you more information about the Jules Verne ATV and its capabilities. Here at Kness, the French Space Agency's center in Toulouse, a new building has been built to host the Automated Transfer Vehicle Control Center. ATVs are Europe's first space cargo vehicles, as Lionel Bay's ATV project manager Knis explains. Toulouse, Toulouse is Europe's Houston when it comes to the International Space Station European Resupply Vehicles. During operations at this control center, around 50 people will work in shifts to ensure round-the-clock ATV control, and in particular, to coordinate ATV operations with the other control centers. Developed by ESA, the European Space Agency, the ATVs are the largest and most powerful space vehicles ever built in Europe. They weigh just over 20 tons and are more than 10 meters long with a diameter of four and a half meters. An ATV is exactly the same size as the familiar British double-decker bus. Equipped with its own propulsion and navigation system, this unmanned space truck has a highly developed automatic navigation system. The ATV is a major contribution to the International Space Station. It brings the ISS a set of functions and services which are required for the ISS to function correctly. Under contract to the European Space Agency, the operations at the ATV control center in Toulouse begin a few hours before the ATV is lifted into orbit by an Ariane 5 launcher. The main operation for us starts about six hours before launch, with final preparations on the launch pad in Kourou. No fewer than three control centers around the world are simultaneously responsible for ATV operations. The MCCM in Moscow, the MCCH in Houston, and of course, the ATVCC in Toulouse. At each of these control centers, American, European, and Russian engineers coordinate their actions. Hey, I'm here from NASA as one of their representatives. I am the automated rendezvous officer. Our main function here is to help coordinate the rendezvous timeline and the overall integration with the ISS operations and the ATV. Even though the ATV is an automatic space vehicle, ground control still remains heavily involved. The vehicle isn't entirely automatic, it's automated. That means that it's capable of reconfiguring itself on its own. But the control center must not only oversee the ATV, but also determine the route it must take to dock with the space station. To do this, we must not only optimize the trajectory in terms of fuel consumption, but also take all the decisions, for example, the maneuvers necessary to approach the space station. And this set of maneuvers is relatively complex and it needs a control center to work them out. These final maneuvers are carried out with extreme precision. The degree of precision required is more or less equivalent to a euro coin like this. That's to say, this 20-ton ship will be automatically docked to the space station and achieve this level of precision. 
Once the ATV is docked, the astronauts can unload the five tons of cargo on board. This includes scientific equipment, food, water, and even air. The rest of the payload, a little less than three tons, is fuel needed by the ATV engines. The ATV carries about three times the weight in terms of cargo of the Russian progress ships. So you can imagine the economy of scale we have. One ATV launch can take the place of three launches by the Russians. However, the ATV is not just a cargo vehicle. Once it is docked at the space station, it becomes an integral part of the whole ISS system, always under control by the center in Toulouse. The pressurized volume provides additional space for the astronauts, who will use it to store waste from the station. Its engines and the three tons of fuel will be regularly called upon to raise the altitude of the space station. And in an emergency, this space tugboat will be invaluable in preventing collisions with potential space debris. After six months, when its mission comes to an end, the ATV, filled with several tons of waste, will separate from the space station and begin its return journey under the watchful eye of the control center before burning up in the atmosphere above the South Pacific. 12 to 18 months later, another ATV will go up to the International Space Station to take its place.